Hi there, welcome to the Top Dog Tips YouTube channel. We're going to be discussing skin tags and how to prevent and how to remove them. Before we begin, please be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's how we continue to grow the channel as well as put out great content for our subscribers. Also be sure to subscribe to our website. If you subscribe to our website using the link in the description, you'll receive a free ebook on 25 vet recommended homemade dog food recipes. So without further ado, let's get into it. What are skin tags? Skin tags are also known as papillomas or skin polyps and acrocordons. All that sounds too scientific. Skin tags are just growths that you see on your dog. They just kind of look like a wart or fleshy growths. They're basically benign tumors anywhere on your dog's body. They can differ in sizes and color. They are usually hairless and found by pressure points in the lower limbs. Another type of skin tag is follicular hematoma. They're a subtype of a skin tag and a much rarer. They tend to be flattened masses with hair and come in multiples. So when you see a skin tag, you know, obviously you think the worst, oh my God, it's a tumor. These aren't cancerous and are completely harmless. These growths are not contagious and you don't need to worry whatsoever about your dog contracting skin tags from another dog. If you're really concerned about it, go ahead and get your veterinarian to take a look at them and just confirm that, hey, it's just a skin tag. If a skin tag diagnosis is made and they're like, yep, it's a skin tag, it's not really necessary to remove them. However, you have the option to get them surgically removed or you can do it by yourself home. But before we get to that, let's talk about how to spot skin tags on your dogs. While skin tags are harmless, they can look very similar to warts, ticks, or some more serious skin conditions. They can look like more serious skin conditions, which can be severe and in some cases life-threatening. Unless you have previous experience with recognizing skin tags, then we recommend to have your veterinarian take a look at the growth for a proper assessment. In most cases, your vet will be able to give you an immediate diagnosis. If it isn't as clear cut, they will likely perform a simple biopsy to rule out the other possibilities. What skin tags are not? They are not malignant tumors. There are some differences in the appearance of a skin tag and a cancerous tumor as well. Cancerous tumors will often have a clear or white discharge and they will be larger in diameter. They are not warts. Warts are most common in young dogs and can be contagious where skin tags are not. So for that reason, you should definitely be cautious when inspecting any lump. Standard form of warts has a cauliflower-like appearance. Skin tags are not ticks. Ticks are obviously those insects that suck blood from your dog and it shouldn't be too difficult to distinguish skin tag from a tick. A tick will start as a small black lump and grow to become paler and larger as time goes on. So what kind of dogs can suffer from skin tags? So there isn't really much scientific or enough scientific research behind the causes of skin tags. There's some studies with people who found a few culprits. For example, a study in 2008, which we'll link in the description, found that papillomavirus may cause their development. In a 2010 study that we'll link in the description as well found that high levels of triglycerides in the body, larger body mass index, and insulin resistance may also cause skin tags to develop. Any dog of any age, gender, or breed and health can develop skin tags. So there isn't any dog that couldn't get it, but some outside factors can increase or decrease the likelihood of developing them. So how to prevent skin tags? So there really isn't enough research to adequately tell us why skin tags happen. Therefore, it can be hard to know what we can do to prevent them. We do have enough evidence that shows some environmental factors can play a significant role in increasing or decreasing your dog's chances of initially developing skin tags. Here are some of the factors. One, parasites. So fleas, ticks, and mites will leave your dog itchy. The scratching that your dog will do can leave your dog's skin inflamed, raw, and susceptible to infection. This weakening of that area of the skin makes it easier for skin tags to develop. Some of the best ways to prevent parasites is frequently washing your dog's bed, keeping your backyard grass cut short, monthly parasite prevention medication, and making sure you wash your hands after exposure to soil and visiting your veterinarian once a year for uh, checkups. The second reason skin tags can develop is skin care. Some dog breeds are indeed more hardy than others. When grooming your dog, it makes sense to start with the skin, especially because it's your dog's first line of defense against illness and infection. And we tend to neglect the care of the skin due to being out of sight, out of mind, because 
because you know they're covered in hair so if you stick to a proper skin care routine like taking your dog to a groomer or bathing your dog once a month this allows your dog's skin in time to build up the natural oils that keep the skin and coat healthy so basically what can happen is that if you don't take care of the skin it can become dry itchy and then inflamed or infected and that would lead to obviously a higher risk of skin tags developing the third cause of skin tags can be diet you know dogs require a well-balanced nutrition to maintain a healthy immune system so what i'm getting to is basically if your dogs tends to be overweight or obese they also have a higher risk of developing skin tags the fourth reason skin tags can develop is allergies so allergic reactions because obviously if your dog has a allergic reaction to some kind of allergy where they itch their skin again the itchiness can cause them to scratch it and then it becomes inflamed possible infection and so on and then developing potential skin tags and then number five breeding some dog breeds are born more prone to skin tags than others but just like you may have been born with you know being nearsighted or sensitivity to the sun genetics are not something any of us can control so breeds that are especially susceptible to skin tags include poodles, schnauzers, cocker spaniels, and terriers. So now let's talk about how to remove skin tags. Once you find the skin tag, just first thing first, stay calm, contact your vet, have them check it out, have them confirm it's a skin tag, keep an eye on it. You can either have it surgically removed or you can remove it. It's obviously, we recommend that you consult your veterinarian before going forward and doing it yourself, just because if you're not educated in sterilizing the area and making sure that the tools you're using or whatever is clean and sterilized we don't want you to risk breaking your dog's skin leaving it open to infection and causing more complications so with the first method we'll talk about you're going to do it by yourself is tying this option is only really doable if your dog's skin tag is long enough to tie off if it is and you're ready to do it you'll need the following supplies you'll need rubbing alcohol scissors dental floss the dental to floss will be used for uh, tying get like a stronger brand that you know is pretty tough a new razor to shave the area before forming this and then a cone collar obviously for afterwards you'll need two people to do this one helper to calm the dog and obviously yourself to tie off the tag step one you would start on a clean floor with a clean dog make sure you've washed them and have the pet lying in a comfortable position where you can easily access the skin tag carefully shave the area surrounding the tag and clean the entire area thoroughly with rubbing alcohol and and then you take a piece of dental floss and tie it around the skin tag base. Be sure to do this as close to the skin and as tight as possible. Be prepared for some struggle as this will cause your dog some level of distress and they may try and whine and run away for a few minutes until the pain subsides. Before you let your dog run away, make sure to put the cone collar on so they don't try and uh, nip at it. In approximately two to four days, the skin tag should fall off. Method number two is surgical scissors. The most common way of DIY skin tag removal is using curve or mayo scissors, like the ones that we'll put here in the description. For this form of dog skin tag treatment, other than curved scissors, you'll also need the following supplies. Again, rubbing alcohol to sterilize, a bowl large enough for the scissors to lay flat in, cotton pads, a new razor to shave the area, a pair of mayo scissors, a styptic pencil or styptic powder. So basically if the dog starts to bleed, you can stop the bleeding. 10% iodine solution and gauze and bandages. So step one, you'd start by placing the surgical scissors in the clean bowl and fill the bowl to cover the scissors with water. Number two, you'd add one teaspoon of iodine solution to the bowl and allow scissors to sit there for at least one minute. So then you now you'll have sterilized equipment. Now on a clean floor with a clean dog, you're going to shave the skin tag region and wipe the area entirely and thoroughly with rubbing alcohol. Once shaven, make sure you have a helper. So have someone else holding your dog firmly, keeping your dog calm. Now you can take the scissors out of the bowl and cut the skin tag at its base. After you cut the skin tag off, immediately press a gauze against the wound to ease the bleeding. Hold this in place for at least five, 10 to 15 seconds. And then you take your styptic pencil or a styptic powder to keep it from bleeding any further. And then carefully place a gauze over the wound and bandage it. And that's pretty much it. Now, if your veterinarian is going to remove it, it'll be some form of surgery your dog will be anesthetized and a more precise tool will be used instead of scissors to remove the skin growth and then your vet might apply some antiseptic or 
antibiotic cream to deter any kind of infection. And then they'll bandage your dog up pretty much like you will. And that will do it for us here at Top Dog Tips. Again, thanks for listening and thanks for watching. If you find our content helpful, if you learn something new each video, please be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as share the channel. That's how we continue to grow our following. With that, I hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll talk to you soon.